everyone, it's Abby. So I know at this point during quarantine, a lot of us are feeling like we've completely run out of Netflix shows. And that's why today I was hoping to introduce you to five of the most popular Canadian TV shows. So these shows are available on Netflix and they're available on Netflix across countries. I know a lot of you guys are already watching TV shows in English, so I hope this will be relatively easy for you. And I hope that you'll be able to find a show in there that helps you reconnect with Canada, since I know a lot of you are missing it here right now, or you've had to have travel plans completely delayed. And it'll also be a great way to learn about our arts and culture, and learn about shows maybe that you didn't even realize were made by Canadian companies. All right, so here's five of the most popular Canadian TV shows. I hope you find one you like, and I hope you find even more than one that you like. Let's get into it. All right, so my first recommendation is Kim's Convenience. Um, this is a show that has three seasons so far on Netflix and is available in Hong Kong, India, Singapore, South Korea, and the United States, as well as a number of other countries on Netflix, so be sure to check it out. I'm sure you'll be able to find it quite easily. Anyways, the show essentially follows a Korean family who has immigrated to Toronto in Canada, and then you watch their life unfold. So they own a family business known as Kim's Convenience, and you also watch the struggles that they have as a family. So the daughter um, is expected to take over this business, but she actually wants to become a photographer. And the father and son have a relatively estranged relationship. So you watch them navigate both their business life as a family, as well as their personal life. And it all ends up being quite funny. It's not meant to be a sad show in any way. It's actually quite hilarious. So there's a lot of like very happy moments, a lot of moments that make you laugh of things you just didn't see coming. And the dad himself was actually an incredibly funny character. He's personally my favorite. My wife and Mrs. Kim is working hard too with a very happy family. So if you're looking for a show just to laugh at, that you find relatively chill, and you want to see some Canadian scenery, this is the one for you. All right, the next show is known as Elias Grace, and it's available in Japan, Brazil, India, Hong Kong, and France, among a host of other countries on Netflix. Uh, and it's only a mini series, so there's only actually six episodes of the show. If you really wanted to, you can complete it in one day, very easily. The show, like I mentioned, is known as Elias Grace, and it's based on Margaret Atwood's novel. So Margaret Atwood is a famous Canadian author who writes on topics of mental health, psychology, mystery, and women's issues, dystopian futures. Largely, she usually intertwines those themes. This particular miniseries follows a man and a woman who are convicted of murder. The man is sentenced to death, while the woman is sentenced to a mental institution. There, they try to figure out if she's sane or insane, and therefore how should she be tried as in relation to this crime. It is not a question of your guilt or innocence that concerns me. I simply wish to know what you yourself can actually remember. I lost part of my memory entirely. I hope sooner or later we will bring back your memory. So it's a great show if you're interested in mysteries, if you're interested in women's issues, mental health, psychology, all of that stuff. It really covers everything. And if you like that, then beyond the show, I also recommend you read Margaret Atwood's books. Okay, so our third show is known as Anne with an E. It's available in Japan, India, Brazil, the United States, and South Korea. And there's two seasons of it currently online. Of course, if I didn't list your country there, feel free to search it up on your Netflix. Hopefully it's there. It is available in quite a wide number of countries. So the show is set in Prince Edward Island, which is a stunning area of Canada that a lot of people maybe haven't visited or aren't even really aware of. Prince Edward Island is the smallest province of the country and is surrounded by coastline, making for a great scenery throughout the show. The story follows an orphan known as Anne, who has suffered some abusive and kind of difficult relationships in the orphanage she's been in, and as well as with the family she's been with previously. But then she enters a new family that actually includes some of her former siblings. And this ends up to be a great opportunity for her. You watch her come of age and transform into a new adult. Who are you? My name is Anne Shirley Cuthbert, and please be sure to spell Anne with an E. You're ridiculous. <laughs> Diana, shall we swear to be best friends forever and ever? I solemnly swear to be faithful to my friend for as long as the sun and moon shall endure. Uh, and it's just a really amazing show to see. It's kind of, it's really happy. You don't really feel burnt down by all the things she's had to go through. And it's overall really joyful. Plus, there's two seasons, so lots to catch up on. Okay, fourth show on the list is known as Heartland. So this show is available in India, Hong Kong, Japan, South Korea, as well as the US. And there's actually 13 seasons of the show. So you have lots to watch during quarantine if you haven't already started. 
It's kind of set in the prairie provinces of Canada and it follows the life of a family that owns a ranch, but the, sadly the mother has died and you watch the daughter really struggle with this throughout the show. And while that part is sad and the possibility of losing the ranch is rather sad as well, you watch the family come together more than once to really rekindle their relationships to each other and work as hard as they can to keep their ranch flourishing and alive. We don't whisper things to horses. We just let them speak to us. You keep 10 feet away at all times. Any part of you that crosses that line will be removed. So it's a very heartfelt show. Of course, not all parts of it are happy, but it really touches on your emotions, on your heartstrings, and I think the scenery itself is also quite beautiful. That's why I'd give the show a good recommendation, and I really suggest you watch it. After all, there's 13 seasons. There's lots of it to watch there. All right, so my final recommendation is a really long-standing show on Netflix. Unfortunately, it's only available on Netflix Canada, which is too bad, but if you're still here in Canada and still using Netflix here, you should be able to access it. There's currently 12 seasons of this show, so it's a really long one with um, long episodes as well. A great one to get started on if you think you have a lot of time left not working and not going to school. So the story follows a detective known as William Murdoch who uses relatively unconventional methods to solve mysteries. And it's all set in Victorian era Toronto. So that's a very different time from what Toronto looks like now and it's really interesting to see those differences. It's also a great show if you love mysteries, if you love humor, because the two of them really combine in this show and nothing's ever too sad, even though they're often solving high profile murder cases. And we're not the only ones looking for it. The world's changing, Murdoch. Unions, suffragettes. Look at us, a pair of troublemakers. Meek women do not make history. So it's a great show to get started if you want something for the long term and if you're still here in Canada because unfortunately at this time it is only available here. So get going. It's a mystery show. You can solve it as you go and the main characters are relatively funny as well. All right, that's all the shows I have today to recommend to you guys that are made by Canadian companies and directors and also largely filmed in Canada. So these shows were widely available across Netflix in a number of countries. So you should be able to find them and a simple search should help you out with that. I hope that amongst these shows, you'll find something that you really start to enjoy and then you can spend your time watching during quarantine as we all kind of try to weather out this social isolation and find something to do. So yeah, I really enjoyed continuing to create content for you guys and we'll keep coming out with stuff new each week. Um, I hope you're all doing well and staying safe and please stay posted on our videos on official CISM, our YouTube, and mycism.com, our website. All right guys, bye, stay safe.